The route's called the Pictish Trail, and it's called that because it actually travels through all the sort of ancient Pictish kingdoms. So right up from Dunnet Head, which is actually the most northerly point of the British mainland, down to Edinburgh. I guess this route came about by trying to link together stuff that we already knew was good, but also creating a route that went to Edinburgh because Glasgow is a really popular place to start a route from, but there's nothing to Edinburgh. And we kind of thought that was a bit of a shame. The term Picts describes the people who lived in northern Scotland from the 4th to 9th century AD. Their name comes from the Latin picti, meaning painted people, and they've fascinated historians and artists for centuries. The Picts' real legacy is their art, intriguing designs that have never been deciphered. So we've made it all the way up north. We're at Dunnet Head, which is the most northerly point in mainland Britain. And behind me is the lighthouse. And uh, it's a lovely morning, so behind that you can see lovely views out to the Pentland Firth and the Orkneys, and it's just majestical. You can see so far today. So yeah, it's time to start riding south and maybe find some better weather. It sort of started off just as, I think I saw a photo somewhere of a really, really nice bit of gravel. And I was like, oh, don't actually know where that is. I need, to, I need to go to Google, I need to find out where that is. Found out where it is. Right, I need a ride that incorporates that bit of gravel. I think I just noticed the number of brochs and like Pictish monuments that it passes and that got me on a bit of a Wikipedia mission. You just sort of like start following a thread and ended up realising that actually it traversed this whole kind of kingdom that's not a lot is known about. Are you enjoying the views with your sandwich? I was really looking forward to this bit because there's some really cool views, but uh, not today. And um, I quite like the race though because it's kind of spooky. And I was riding along and he was somewhere behind me talking to himself and I could just hear this like voice floating along in the wind. Yeah, it was kind of cool. All the dramatic scenery down the west coast but the east coast has all these really beautiful little villages and towns and i think people just write it off as like oh yeah it's a bit boring or maybe you'd go there for like a kind of beach family holiday but you don't expect there to be good riding but actually what we found is that there's just really beautiful bits of trails all over the place and you can kind of ride into these towns on like something really nice by the river and arrive at a beach with a good ice cream shop and you can just sit and have a great time before you then ride back out again to the next one. Bike packing, it's just kind of freedom for me and just to feel like you can kind of go as far or as short as you want and just feeling like the power of your body and the power of your legs is just a really relaxing and beautiful way to travel I think. I think especially on a route like this the main one is kind of curiosity love technical single track but I also love journey and especially if that journey's got something that you're looking for like if you're actually excited to see if that bit of trail actually works or just to see what the view's like from you know, a different side of the mountain that you've been on before. And especially with this route there is a lot of like layers of history through the landscape you know one minute you're next to a Pictish fort but ten minutes later you could be up at Dune Raid nuclear power station up on the north coast so there's quite a lot of just thinking about where you are and why it looks like that which makes a lot more sense when you're actually in the landscape. Yeah I'm not really into that mainstream gravel I prefer alternative gravel like this 
Although we're in Scotland and gravel's not really a thing anyway. Anything that's not, or between tarmac and single track is like, ah, we'll call it gravel. It goes on a bike. But uh, kind of hoping we hit some gravelly gravel fairly soon. One thing that you definitely learn along the way, even if it takes a few repeated lessons, is that if you're feeling sad and feeling a bit down and getting grumpy at each other, it's probably not the weather, it's probably just because you need some snacks. And it's mad how, you know, at one point we we're ready to just pack the whole thing in. 20 minutes later, you're feeling absolutely 10 out of 10. I think you learn to trust that it'll get better around the corner. It probably doesn't need much to change it for you. I think a big highlight of this route is just how varied the kind of landscape is and there's just like so many different layers. The far north of Scotland, where you've got all the different Pictish kingdoms, you've got the remains of the brocks that were built then. What were amazing kind of domed structures, two layers of walls and passageways between them. And some of them that are really close to the route you can still kind of go and look at and sort of walk through as well. So you've got this amazing like change of history from that to kind of what the land use is now. But also the route takes you through everything from the kind of grouse shooting moors, deer shooting estates, forestry, industry, like kind of way more natural areas as well through the mountains. And so it's just constantly changing and constantly varied. Uh, this is probably the stinkiest climb on the whole route. So this is the fungal road. Oof, it's a grindy old climb. And we'll end up about 600 metres, so get a good facial from the wind. I think a highlight of riding it was getting down to the kind of more southerly sections because you think, oh, the Highlands is where all the good riding is going to be. So I think that kind of mixture of countryside, urban, new stuff, old stuff, that, that's been definitely a highlight of it. We're just in Dundee, which claims to be the sunniest city in the UK, and it's proving itself correct, and it's great not being rained on. I'm going up. We are getting the lift up onto the Tay Road Bridge, which is how I used to commute to university. I think the thing that I've enjoyed most about putting the route together is the fact that it transitions through a lot of different landscapes. So a lot of the bike packing routes that are already established in Scotland, you know, a lot of them stick to the northwest where that's really dramatic mountain scenery. And it is really varied, but you know, it's same, same or variations on a theme. So we're about to ride over the fourth road bridge, which means we're nearly at the end. We've just come through Fife, which is our old stomping ground. And it's been kind of funny riding around with touring kit and camping, places we never kind of thought we would. It's been good. This route goes from like the far north coast up in Caithness, like through the flow country, and then all of a sudden you're on the Sutherland coast, which is like quite dramatic cliffs, but then you're in Inverness, like half of the highlands, then you're in the Cairngorms, suddenly you're in Fife, I don't know, it's the fourth bridge in front of you. So I think that variation of landscape has been, been definitely a highlight of it.